Welcome back to another episode of Spotlight on the Arts, the show brought to you by the Chicopee Cultural Council and Chicopee TV. My name is Johnny Miranda, your host for the evening, and today we have an amazing show. We meet internationally renowned fashion designer, Lisa Goodman Nichols. So stay tuned for our show, up next. And here we are with Lisa Goodman and Nichols from Sardu Boutiques. She is the fashion designer, CEO of such boutiques, and we are excited to have her on our show. Thank you for being with us. No problem. It's How an honor. You? It's an honor, Johnny. I'm excited because I want to learn more about your journey as a fashion designer. We always bring artists to our show and we love hearing about their journeys and what they have created and what uh, they've impacted the community with. So tell us about fashion design. How did you <laughs> choose this as a career path? Well, it actually was kind of chosen for me as a youth. My dad was an artist. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. So, yes, I'm a Steeler fan. Nice, nice. <laughs> I don't want to say that in New England, but yes, die hard. Don't let and, nobody hear you outside. Right? My dad was a taxidermist so for Carnegie. So I ended up with a scholarship to Carnegie, which is one of the greatest schools. They know that uh, internationally. And I, after doing that, I got the honor roll there. And my dad was, uh, would have a lab. So he would put, a, put me in a room, put me and my sisters, I had no brothers, four sisters, and he would cut out the girls from Playboy and glue them on cardboard and gave them to us to draw clothes for them. <sighs> he showed us that they weren't clothed. Of course, they were naked, but it was an art to us. It was nothing ever to be ashamed yeah, yeah. of. It was an art. And we, I began drawing clothes at like six, seven years old. So I used to fashion design clothes and sketches and roll them up, put them in my closet. And then years later, they would be on like the cover of Vogue. So my, I'm like, I'm going to do platforms. And my sisters would be like, oh, that's so weird. You know, what are you doing with those weird clunky shoes? And who's going to wear that? You know, and I'm like, I love this. And she's like, look, sis, this stuff is coming out. It's like on Vogue. So I knew I had something. I knew I had a vision. And I knew I had a passion. So I've always been extremely unique, extremely different. So that's what kind of birthed the, I always knew I would be a fashion designer. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but the road I'm going to take. I went to Art Institute of Pittsburgh uh, for visual design. And at that time I did fashion illustration because they didn't have fashion design as a program. They instituted that after I graduated. So I did that shortly. My first uh, big uh, break in fashion was designing all my high school friends' prom dresses. Oh, nice. And that was like my first paid gig. Yes, it was exciting. So in my school, it was uh, kind of like a suburban high school where there weren't many people of color. I uh, was fortunate. My family was, you know, pretty comfortable. So we... For me to get a showcase, only athletes dominated the showcase. You know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I had a whole showcase. And if I would have had known I was doing this, I would have brought the picture of my favorite art teacher. And I never forget his name, Mr. Karkowski. Mr. Karkowski. I loved him. He we, was. We, we owe a lot to you because you produced or contributed to Lisa's future. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then you, I think every kid, everybody needs somebody yeah. that believes in them as a youth. Not to mention my, my dad, my mom, they was like, oh, you're going to be a star. You're going to be a fashion designer. They always called me that. So I loved it. And I think it's so important to cultivate youth. Mm -hmm. And that is another passion that I'll talk about briefly of uh, to cultivate their gifts and to support them. I don't care how far fetched it is. Whatever you want to be, you can be it and you can do it with the right guidance, the right support. So that was my first paid gig and I wasn't cheap. I got like $200, you know, that was a nice. lot of money yeah, yeah. when I was 17. 
uh, getting for dresses. And I did like four or five girls and we're like, yes, we're going to be the only ones to walk in the prom with completely designer dresses from myself. I designed my own, of course, and I would have brought that picture for you. And my dad hired a makeup artist and a seamstress to make it, brought the team into the house the day of the prom, surprised me. And I did this nice hairdo on my sketch. He did my hair up, just like the sketch. They did my makeup. Nice. So it was so exciting. And then uh, we didn't want to get a, we got like a limo to the prom, but my kind of family, like we just kind of chauffeured in a Mercedes because it matched our, we use our family car because it matched my dress. It was red. So needless to say, that brought me to a place of determination. Like no matter what goes on in life, I then uh, ended up moving to Boston upon graduation from Art Institute. And I landed on Newbury Street, which absolutely loved. Back then it was like really Dolce Gabbana, Dior. So I worked for Dior, I worked for International uh, Paris, uh, Rodier Paris, which was from France. And I was always like top sales internationally. I just love people. I grew nice. up with the entrepreneurship, okay, background. The mindset, yeah, of course. Yeah, with tell. my family and we were, we had real estate, we had um, n uh, nightclubs and we had decorating companies and all this stuff going on. So I was doing cold calls when I was like seven and eight years old yeah. <laughs> on the phone, just yeah, yeah. used to rejection. So there wasn't like a natural path for you to be where you are today, having yeah. the influence of the entrepreneurial family and having that your artistic passion for fashion design. How did it feel when you booked that first fashion show? Tell well, us about that. Yeah, well, it's been, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of work. Um, I first of all, after uh, starting my business in 2011, I did take the entrepreneurship classes at Stick. I'll shout out my professor for entrepreneur studies there who was uh, Diane Sabato, outstanding. She just recently retired from Stick. So I believe that the education along with the experience is what helps you mm -hmm. uh, make this a package that's, that's successful, that's marketable. Because you can have one and it's very difficult. It's a far-fetched field, but you need both. So I, um, I did that, and I, um, when I launched my business, it was Surdu Boutiques. It's couture fashion. Surdu means uh, extremely gifted, exceptional. And couture, of course, is high fashion. So I've always, people have always asked me, how did you learn how to do this, designing? And I would just let them know, it's a gift. You know, I can't, it's something that God has given me. You can enhance it, but you can, I can't give it to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just like you can't teach someone how to sing. You can s skill them and support them, but they have to be born with it. Mm -hmm. So with that going on, I launched Surdue Boutiques 2011 in the Eastfield Mall and also uh, finished stick and then got my undergrad at AIC, American International College, business uh, management and uh, admin. And I was determined to launch my own line. Even though I've had so many personal challenges uh, that I won't even begin to go into because it's, 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 it's complicated. But it was so much challenge to keep that goal out in front of me. Like this is it, I don't, no matter what's happening in my personal life, I went through being a single mom, I went through losing my first husband, then I went through a second marriage that ended up ending in divorce. It was very, very uh, strongly uh, crazy. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's gonna, I'm gonna I'm say. I'm sorry you went through that. But yeah, I guess it built there your was character. a lot of good to it too, but everything, I don't uh, believe that we go through nothing by mistake. I believe that everything is a part of making us who we are that gives us tenacity mm -hmm. to achieve our goals and our dreams. So when I launched the boutique in the Eastfield Mall back in 2011, I've always had sketches. I have sketched at every job. My background also is uh, accounting, finance, and insurance. So I also went and got my insurance license. You, when you have a dream like fashion or music, 
or something like that, acting, you got to have some skills to get you there. You got to pay the bills. Of course. <laughs> you know, and of then uh, ended up being a single mom. So I'm like, oh, I got to buy my first house. I did that. And I constantly had um, these skills so I continue to work. I'm also a grant writer. So I'm a certified grant writer. So I continue to finance my dream personally. So I've been self-financed. I've been in business now 13 years. So, and I've launched uh, clothing uh, samples, you know, for people. I do weddings and, you know, draw and sketch up proms. We did custom designs for prom dresses in the mall. But I finally was able to launch my full collection in uh, 2021 of Beautiful. September. Beautiful. So, and that was the first collection of 16 pieces. I had got offered to go on Project Runway like a while back, way back, like back in 2005. But I was so nervous that, um, you know, under that kind of pressure, I just didn't yeah, know. It's not the same. Yeah, and the yeah. application was like this thick, about an inch thick. So I was like, I'm kind of scared if, if I go under there, you know, because you're operating under category. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm not sure if I could do that under that kind of pressure. So I kind of passed on that. But I did start going to Fashion Week. So uh, they started just sending me tickets. I won an essay, I'm a great writer. So for free tickets for Fashion Week. So I said, that's it, that's where, that's where I'm going. That's my goal. Nice. So I launched my collection in Springfield and this was a difficult time because it was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. you know, and it was 2020, we went through the shutdown and my business survived the shutdown, which was awesome and they kind of gave us honors and rewards from the, I got to mention them, the MGCC, the Mass Grant Capital yeah, Growth, yeah. Uh, gave me a $25,000 grant as a minority woman surviving the pandemic, being in business, really helped me nice. uh, maintain and stay, keep my doors open because we were closed for almost like six to eight months. Yeah, yeah. During that time, I used that time as downtime to create to launch our website, which is on a global platform in 39 countries Beautiful. now with Shoptiques. So anybody can Google us. And that I first heard of from Wendy Williams. I was watching a Wendy Williams show one day years ago and she kept mentioning Shoptiques. She's like, well, a lot of the celebrities go on there to shop. And I was like, hey, I want my store there. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna get on there. So Fortunately, I did get uh, everything on that platform and then also was invited to come on the Wendy Williams show in 2021. Nice. They contacted me and I'm like, OK, well, the collection's not finished yet, so I didn't want to go on as a guest. So they did want me on camera. So we figured out a way to uh, get me at least on there visibly. And nice. I love Wendy. I know things she's not on as like she was. She's on a podcast now, but I still love Wendy. Nice, nice. So I took her a dress from our private collection. I made her some fur slippers and a necklace to match and uh, gave it to the producers when I came in. Sure enough, my fiance at the time, who is now my husband, Chris Nichols, we went and uh, they put me all up in the VIPs like they're going to separate us. I said, oh, no, they're not. He said, yeah, they are because they're going to want you on camera. So sure enough, they did that. <laughs> and uh, the producers were like, we need to pitch a script. So they kept coming up to me and it was so funny. And I was like, OK, so I pitched this little script. People don't know that things are scripted, but they are. Yeah. So out of uh, it was like 30 or 40 people, they kept pulling back. They had only pulled two for Ask Wendy. And of course, I was one because it was scripted. Right. So. Uh, it was hilarious <laughs> and I still have that. So anybody can Google it. It was June 21st of 2021 and nice. it's still trending on YouTube. I'm definitely going to it's be hilarious. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. see because, you with Wendy. <laughs> yes, we were physically on Wendy and she's asking me how old I am. I'm like, Wendy, come on, stop it. <laughs> you know, we're on TV. And it was so funny. And my, my husband now at the time was, is younger than me. So they love that idea. OK, they just loved it. And I'm like, well, this is my third marriage. You know, come on now. This yeah. is his first. So they just went to town on that. Nice. So it, it's real cool. And it has John Oliver uh, as the guest. So if anybody wants to just Google in YouTube, John Oliver, the time he was on Wendy Williams, June 21st of 2021. Nice. That's our show. 
So I know we turned it out. We made the show that day because it was hilarious. And what, what, uh, what do you feel that are the best places for you to promote your fashion design, do you, your fashion uh, creations? Do you feel that it's better in magazines, TV, doing runway shows? What would be the best way for a fashion designer to promote or is it a combination of all? Okay. Um, I want to answer your question first about, you said, about the show. And I have been doing shows since I launched my store because I think that it's very important to have engagement yeah. with your customer, know who your audience is and know who you're dressing and who you're styling. Definitely. So um, the fastest, the best way is shows. And there's so many venues, even just uh, schools. I did schools, the Pioneer Valley uh, School um, over, what is that, in West Springfield? Yeah. Uh, they had contacted me for um, do, to do shows, and I never turned down opportunities, even no matter how big or how small. Because first of all, I love to inspire youth, and then you're still getting visibility. Mm -hmm. So I always do shows. So I always do shows with the boutique, but I, at that time, I was only able to always have a couple pieces because I was so busy managing the business portion of it. Of course. And now that I've, um, when the, the pandemic was probably the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. I know that's strange, yeah. <laughs> but I got plenty of rest. I got plenty of vision and I launched and I grew yeah. it during this pandemic and I've came out on top and I still haven't gone. It allowed down. you to have some creative time. Cre yes. Yeah. And you need that. So um, I do the shows. I, I would do, uh, I do two shows a year and I always do, which is a fall show and a spring show. Nice. And I used to do my one of my shows was here in the Hukulau. Remember the Hukulau? Nice. That yes. was a big show. And my store actually, after leaving the mall, when the mall went down, when they lost their anchor stores in Eastfield, I moved to Broadway Street, Chicopee. You were here in Chicopee, I remember. Yes, yes. I was here for a couple years uh, next to former Dugan's Pizza, which we always loved that food. Nice. And Shout out to Dugan. <laughs> yes. And. Um, <laughs> So with shows now, I'm really in a place where once I launched a collection for 2021 Riverfront mm -hmm. Park, uh, that got so much visibility for, um, it was really fortunate. Shout out to the mayor also of Springfield. He gave me a day in the city. They gave me nice. House of Representatives, this uh, Senate uh, citations for the uh, collection and the accomplishments. But that was seen by so many, and I think social media is probably the fastest way yeah. for us to spread any type of talent or gifts. So that's how we do our shows. We make sure we have enough visibility for our social media platforms that are there for us. And somehow that got in the hands of the Tanger Outlets Leasing Office, which was a corporate in North Carolina. They had started emailing me to grow this business to open a second location at Foxwoods. Yeah, yeah, you you are working on that, and no, that's it's a very open. exciting no, project. No, we're tell, open. That tell, store oh, is, me, is awesome. On so, Foxwoods. Yeah, yes. so I'm now only in the 413 two days a week because we launched Foxwoods for December, like the week before Christmas. Nice. So that was insane. Not only did I, and I also was invited for by the CFDA to show at New York Fashion Week for October for the, I mean, for September for the fall. This was insane. I'm, I, I'm usually, most artists and creative people, if you know, they're like really neurotic, borderline <laughs> HD, ADHD, but we've never been tested. Yeah, yeah. But we're like high strong, high energy, high yeah, creative, yeah. innovative, and we stay like in the future. So yeah. it's very hard to keep us grounded. Yeah. So. I was like, okay, I, I, I seen the emails from the Foxwoods of uh, people, but I couldn't even respond. I was finishing, listen to this, I was finishing my MBA in international business, shout out to SNHU, and this was due, I graduated in November. I got my, my wedding was October of 2022. I got um, offered to show, because I applied for Fashion Week, they sent me the email from the CFDA for September of 2022. Yeah. So unfortunately, because I have, I have about a team of five seamstresses. So in the Springfield store, I just want to say is located 1500 Main Street now. 
uh, Tower Square, second level next to the food court. And I could not um, recreate a whole nother collection while doing my wedding because, mm. of course, I had to have this over, time. over the top <laughs> wedding with, of course, my models had to be in it. And then I had to design a dress. I had to wear two dresses and it was crazy. I guess so, it must be torturous <laughs> as, a, as a fashion designer it's terrible. to design your own dress. Oh, no, there's <laughs> nothing worse than that. I would sketch, get up in the middle of the night. And if I would have known I was, this was going to be a show, I would have brought some sketches. And I would have brought you some samples of some of the pieces that I have from the collection. We'll have them up. We'll have them up. But um, so needless to say, um, once they contacted me, they off made a great offer for us to come to Foxwoods Tanger Outlets to the um, uh, luxury brand section. They reserved the space for us next to Coach, next to Ugg, uh, right next to Kate Spade. And uh, we are the luxury brand that is new. Nice. In the mall, and we are open. Our suite is 580. If anybody's watching and would like to see it, yeah. we haven't posted that on our Yelp and our website yet for address, but we're working on that now. How else can people reach you aside from uh, your Foxwood boutique and the uh, 1500 Main Street boutique yes. in Springfield? Um, what are your social media? What other social okay. media platforms can you? So we have um, definitely you can reach me by Facebook, Lisa Goodman Nichols. Uh, you can reach Surdu Boutiques has its own Facebook. You can reach the Instagram at Surdu Boutique Express. And you can also reach our website at SurduBoutiques.com. You can also reach nice. us on ShopTeeks globally, just ShopTeeks.com. Nice. So we have plenty of channels for that. You can reach us on Snapchat and we haven't really set up a platform. We're always doing reels nice. on TikTok though. Our, my assistants do reels on TikTok when we get new collections in. I'm currently working on a new collection to go for fashion week for fall nice. of 2023. I've already done my spring collection um, I, I've sketched it all up, but I now have to start putting that together. Nice. I'm really interested, too. I've been pursuing, contacted by film director, yeah. uh, Barry Gaines. I'm not sure. He was an HBO award winner for film. For He's a reality Miami. show? No, <laughs> I do need one, right? And I do need one. Uh, this was uh, for costume designing for nice. a show that's actually on Prime. And I am trying to uh, revisit that. At the time, it was just so many irons in the fire because I yeah, do yeah. do a lot of community stuff. I am passionate about my community and I do bring, uh, do a lot of youth mentoring nice. uh, through YEP, which is Youth uh, Entrepreneur, um, uh, Youth Entrepreneur Experience for okay. my own helping. But I did launch the Community Youth and Drama Center project about five years ago. I mean, about it ran for about six years, but it's been a while now in Springfield, but I'm so passionate about the arts and giving back. Each show that I do, I do two shows a year. I make sure that I give proceeds back to nice. natural disasters, uh, anything that's in the community that's affected for youth, yeah. uh, reading, literacy, you know, when they had like the hurricane thing, different things. I always make sure that I give back to the community. I also have passion for grant writing for community and economic development for the inner city, urban youth, mm -hmm. underprivileged, youth at risk, and also battered women's shelters. So I'm currently working on a venture with yeah. the uh, CPC right now to try to, along with uh, my church, to get this off the ground. It's for amazing. Women. It's amazing how, how every artist that we bring to the show and every artist that we meet not only is focused on their craft and in creating, but it's also, it's also a part of their mission to give back to the community and to do things that will impact uh, those social aspects around them. Um, a little bit off topic, what do you think it's the color of the season? <laughs> For right now? Yes. Chartreuse. What is that? Chartreuse is um, kind of a, a, a catch between a green, a neon green, and a lime green. Nice. But it has like a goldy kind of color to it. So it, chartreuse can go 
high for spring and also go uh, really gorgeous for fall. Nice. So I definitely think that is definitely the color for right now. I was having a conversation with a friend last night after washing, watching the uh, the Rihanna halftime show. Oh, yes, I love that. And um, so I just find it very coincidental, or is it, it's my brain that I'm just catching people wearing reds. So yeah. I see Rihanna with red, but then I saw Beyonce's concert and she had like red. And then have you seen... What do you think of these boots that came out? Oh, they look the crazy. Red, I don't, the they red. look like olive oil. Who's wearing those? <laughs> My husband was just showing me those. Like, hey, I always tell people there's a market for everybody. Yeah, and yeah. for everything. Do not shun any ideas. You can be laying in your bed at night and come up with the craziest thing. And you're like, I don't care. I like it. It's also somebody, how you style always, it. Yeah. There's already <laughs> always somebody else that will agree with you. Yeah, so yeah. I think an aesthetic is what it is. Every designer has to have their own aesthetic. Yeah. And yeah. no matter how bizarre or how crazy, if that's their aesthetic, be true to yourself and stick with it. And you will start to have your own followers. Yes. And that's what I love about Surdu Boutique because it is original. It's completely unique. And it has its own aesthetic. It stands out in the crowd and it's meant to do that. Yeah. So even in the Foxwood store, among all these brands I was so nervous about, I'm like, ooh, we're new, yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's not even like these brands from Coach, uh, Kate Spade, uh, uh, they're invented from night, Coach is what, 1938, uh, August in the, at least in 1980s, mm -hmm. you know, different things like that. But when you're building your own brand, it's like you're birthing this child mm -hmm. that you're bringing into the world as this vision that you're passionate about that you want to share with everybody. Yeah. So and you want people to recognize your aesthetic immediately. Yes. And that's really even no matter that's how very crazy important it is. for an actor, important anyone. for a visual artist yes. to have that style that characterizes and stick you with it. Don't try to be anyone else because yeah. a lot of times we glean from different people mm -hmm. and we glean from styles. But we have to be true to who we are because yeah. that's how that's what's going to give you the glue to, to keep going. Definitely. So even our stores, if anyone looks at our stores, um, they will say right away, I am launching in Boston. I just want to let you guys know I'm going to be prophetic. Nice. <laughs> I'm launching in Boston as 2024 is my goal. Manifesting it, 2024 Boston. Yes, Boston location. Surdue Boutiques. Yes, Surdue Culture is the brand label and Surdue Boutiques is the store. Nice. So we are very, very unique. We will custom even make. Uh, we carry uh, extra smalls, two plus sizes. We believe our, our motto is image is everything because we believe image is everything. So that's why I was like, yeah. oh my goodness, today, I'm like, this is a down day for me. <laughs> but, but you know, and, and true to that, Anywhere you go for the first time that someone sees you, what are they going to get in their mind, an image of you? Yeah, your, your body language. That's your how they're going to remember yeah. you. You're visual first because they're, they're, they're not even seeing your body language. They're not talking to you. Right. It can be nonverbal, but you walk in a room. When you walk in that room, what do you do? You know, this is us. We command the attention. We command that, you know, this is us. This is our style. This is our aesthetic. And every one of my customers, uh, trust me, I can tell you what they've worn to yeah. their uh, events. And that's how I remember them. Nice. By what they've By worn. what I styled them in. Nice. So nice. I'm like, I do have a person that I'm so inspired by, and that's Ruth Carter. Why and, is that? Of course, because she's awesome. Nice. She's so awesome. She's from Springfield. She's our star yes. here. She yes. is iconic. She is. she is a woman of color. She's heroic. And everything she does, Black Panther, I mean, we just, that, you know, and it's hard for me because I'm so innovative to have a role model. Mm -hmm. And when you're really the creator, you're always creating. So even though you may admire someone, you don't have mentors. There's some all the time in these kind of fields. Sometimes your mentors are people that are in Hollywood or people yeah. that are all over these places. They're not really hands on, no. but I do love her. And I'm actually like definitely. Well, let's manifest it together. I'm she is be... your idol and she she'll probably be in our show soon. So yes. let's manifest that. For yes, her. yes. Nice. So I really definitely want to get into more costume design. Nice. Uh, and also that form of the industry. I have written some films 
and with a creative background and performing arts, that's definitely where I'm going to. That's amazing. Well, Lisa, I am very excited to have had you in the show. <laughs> I'm you. glad that we have an opportunity to let the community know about the great work you've doing, you're doing, about the shows that are coming up, and the opening of your boutique at Foxwoods. I yes. think that that is amazing. So please go out there to Foxwood so you can uh, visit Lisa over at uh, Sir Du Boutiques uh, yeah. with high fashion couture. And please make sure also to follow her. It's in downtown Springfield as well, 1500 Main Street. Yes. Um, but make sure that you follow her on all of her social media on platforms so that you can look at all her designs on Instagram, on uh, Facebook. Make sure that you uh, support local talent, yes. that you uh, support women that are entrepreneurs, that you support people of color yes. that are pursuing their dreams and in business. So thank you once again, Lisa. Thank you, I Johnny. appreciate you I very, very much. I feel like I much. got a new brother. You do. <laughs> so you do excited. have a brother in the arts. So I'm yes. excited that you've been here. I'm excited that our audience had a thank chance to meet so you. Thank you so much for so the opportunity. So thank you once again for being in the show. And out there, Chickabee, I will see you next time.